blast off. It's 4 o'clock on a Monday, and you know what that means, don't you? It's time for another exciting episode of Taxi TV Live! This week, our special guest star, Miss Robin Frederick! Yeah! Woo! And this week, we're doing Does Your Song Sound Contemporary? Combined with Speed Dating! Yes! And... Hey, Dan, we've had enough of both of you guys. Hi, Robin. <laughs> Welcome hey, to the show. Thank you. This poor woman, she comes on the show, and she's like, man, what is this dude going to do to embarrass me today? <laughs> well, uh, you guys have said in the past that we belabor, you know, we spend a lot of time, because Robin is, for my money, seriously, like the best song analyst. At, ooh, song analyst. That's I like awesome. that. Yeah, yeah, very PhD-ish. Um, anyway, she gives incredibly good feedback, and I don't want to stop her sometimes because what she's doing is giving somebody like everything they need to fix a song. So on today's show, due to popular demand, we're going to limit you to two minutes per, and af- when you hit the two-minute mark, Bria is going to kick me under the table. We're going <laughs> to we're going to hit the clappy thing, and um, and then we'll move on to the next song. Okay. So that's the deal. We're going to try and get through a whole bunch of them because you guys want us to. And if this is an epic fail, it's on you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not, I'm not a fan of speed dating. All yeah. kinds of things can go wrong, right, guys? That's right. <laughs> All right. Uh, hello to everybody in the chat room. And in the interest of getting on with the show, <laughs> but, yeah. um, I'm going to jump right into it without saying hello to everybody. But it looks like we've got a very full house. Yeah. Bria is I already reminding me names. to hold up my little cards. Um, so, yeah. all right. For those of you who are watching, actually, I think you can subscribe during the show. So, right down there in the corner, that, yeah, yeah, right there, right th- there. That's where you want to be. So hit that subscribe button, like us, and share this with your friends, if you have friends. Now, if you don't have friends, share it with a stranger. We just want you to hit the share button so that uh, YouTube likes us. We don't care who you share it with. <laughs> hey, we're a truthful show. What can we say? <laughs> anyway, so uh, that's the drill. We're going to play the song up until the end of the first chorus. Yeah. Um, and then you've got two minutes to make a profound change <laughs> if necessary don't do this to me okay <laughs> and talk about re- embarrassing me here <laughs> I know, I know. I, i'm i'm really not i don't know guys okay I, I don't know that this is respecting the song the way i like to respect the song so i'll do it we'll see what happens you know uh, we're only doing it because they, they ask, they ask. They that's ask. right it's you know you. sometimes people don't know what's good for them yeah <laughs> we're gonna find out today all right, so the first thing we have, I'm not going to give out names today. Um, we're only going to song titles because that's what we do. Um, we don't think it's necessary to, yeah, just song titles. Um, so the first one is called One Teardrop at a Time. I took the fall so you can take the fifth. Really clever, really fresh, drew me in right away to the song. And that's a good contemporary opening. 
take this ring, give it to your lucky one. It's a little bit vague. I'm not sure where, if they're already married or what's going on. So that raised some questions for me as a listener. And you want to be sure to keep your listener right with you and not raise those kinds of questions. To give this a little a, a more contemporary edge, a couple things I'd suggest. The chorus is falling into a very uh, line pattern. I'm going to get over you one teardrop at a time. I'm going to do this one teardrop at a time. And you're hitting that beat one. One teardrop at a time. One tear, And it gets repetitive too quickly. Today's listeners, and we're going to hear this a lot today, today's listeners really like rhythmically interesting melodies, especially in the uh, verse and chorus. Not especially in the chorus. But I would suggest offsetting the one teardrop in a time, try starting it on the upbeat instead of the obvious downbeat. It's too obvious for today's listeners. Um, could use some more momentum in that melody, and that might be all you need, and more rhythmic interest, and that might be all you need. Start playing around with that. The vocal performance and the track are a little bit out of sync. I would say I'd like to hear the vocalist uh, lay, um, lay it into the pocket a little bit better um, and still get that emotion across. It feels like it's a little bit vocal feels a little square. Um, and we're tending towards R&B these days in um, top 40 and, and AC, which is what I assume you're aiming for. So a little more swing, a little more R&B feel, and you'll be more contemporary. Okay. Nope. Wrong button. Two minutes was <laughs> up. Though. No, I wasn't. 30 seconds left. Oh. Oh, well, well, let's keep seconds. going. Okay, keep I, going. I okay. It. No, I mean, let's do the next song. Let's, okay. I got it. That's it. <laughs> that, that should get you on the right path, okay? Oh, I, I want to add, um, people were commenting in the chat room, uh, yeah, the production on it. Uh, I mean, we're Are we not... Are really going to production I, today? I, I'll add just like a little tap okay. if necessary, but it sounded very 80s as well. Yeah. So everything that made it sound less the contemporary that Robin pointed out in the writing was underscored by the fact that production also sound okay we'll include production then as we go okay okay oh this one is called I'd rather be close to you the 1970s R&B feel. Um, we were talking about Luther Vandross, talking about Barry White, maybe even earlier than that. Oh, come on. you got to tell them your name for Barry White. From no, I don't. I do not. Please. Oh. Okay? Not your name, but one that... Let's okay. get going. All right. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> I just, he told me speed dating, and I'm not going to give answers <laughs> right. to questions I don't want to give answers to. I get to do that in speed dating. Okay. So... It's pulling in, in not just, and you can handle production in a minute because it's a lot of that too, and the vocal. But here we have a lyric that in these days, I very rarely go for a theme or an attitude. But in these days of Me Too, I would be very, very cautious about a lyric like this. This pulls way back towards the uh, early 70s, late 60s when it was okay to be really focused on the male. This is all about what the singer wants. 
I want to tell you what my biggest ambitions are. My lady don't have to be a movie star. Well, thank you. See, this is this is really insulting in, a lot, in so many ways. Um, it's it's I, I'm simple and easygoing. My lady don't have to be a movie star. Um, is it just it, it doesn't sit well with women. And this type of song sells to women. You have got to get your female audience intrigued by the, the singer and involved in the song and wanting to hear what this guy has yeah, to this say. Is kind of, come on over, let me slap you in the face. Kind of. Yeah, kind of, kind of. Cause, and then it's, I want to tell you what my biggest ambitions are. I'd rather be close to you because you've given me, and so it's all about what she's giving him. Oh, and I hate to, I'm sorry to be so negative, but yeah, it really kind of hit me wrong. Then And then we get into a lyric in the, in the chorus where we have a lot of unrelated imagery, magic lamp, forearms, that takes a minute for the listener to figure out where forearms comes from. Uh, five ways to give love to you. Six pieces of my heart times 22. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm lost. Um, Neither of us are rocket scientists when it comes to math. That's not at all. And not as any listener out there. They're not going to do math. You can't ask them to do math. <laughs> nor do I understand where that comes from. Please tell me what I have to do and what counts when it comes to dealing with you. I don't need a calculator to listen. With. Yeah. Um, so there's the hook. I'd rather be close to you is working. I mean, it's very nice, but again, this is really pulling in its theme, in the use of language, in the types of melody it's pulling towards uh, back a, a few decades. So it's going to take a re pretty stiff rewrite to make this work. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, by the way, somebody commented she's good. She's not good. She's great, and she wrote this book. Almost all the people in the chat room that I know have the book already. If you're new to Taxi TV or you're new to the whole taxi thing and you've never read Robin's book, Shortcuts to Hit Songwriting, buy this book. I'm the publisher. If you don't think this book was worth every penny you paid for it, hit me up. Send me back the book in resellable condition. I will give you a refund. In all these years, I've never had to refund one. So Yay. there you go. It's great. And those of you who know me know that I don't exaggerate okay. that stuff. All right, Hazy. next up. Hazy. Hazy. Hazy comes next. Photographs of you, mommy and a favorite tune, as you drove above the coast. The night of the beach, as the waves lap at our feet, nervously making jokes. Sorry, I tried to uh, cut into that. I forgot you guys don't have the lyrics. Well, I'm applauding now then. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Every song deserves applause. Absolutely. It takes, it takes courage to submit and get your work reviewed in a public forum. You said forum, it. So yeah, I know how much how scary that is. Believe me, I remember quite well. Um, okay, so this pulls towards the 1960s in some ways um, uh, in terms of the uh, production, but I'm more concerned at, at the, with the songwriting. Um, we're looking at images. It's really good imagistic writing. There's plenty of images, photographs of you. Um, I'm not sure why photographs of you remind me of your favorite tune as we drove up the coast. Then we get into the coast, moonlight soaked the beach as the waves lapped at our feet, nervously making jokes. We get a picture of these two people in a beach rendezvous. And as we laid down, my brain had completely unwound as we reached for the edge of each other. So there's a physical reality of, of um, my heart... Uh, climbing a rock as my heart beat, heart rate grew is very specific. And yet, when we get to the pre-chorus, we get to as we reach the edge of each other, where edge is used as a metaphor. 
be careful um, if you're going to mix a, you know real rocks with metaphorical edges you're going to confuse the listener and and they're going to just push away you want only you would in. find that in, um, in a good way. Well, I mean. <laughs> when I was listening to it, I actually listened to this one before, and I noticed it right away that my energy changed when we got to the pre-chorus. Mm -hmm. He's it, not only does he have a descending melody line, which is a little unusual for the pre-chorus, um, but also I felt the change from physically being in a specific, detailed situation to reaching for the edge of you made me really uncomfortable. I, I've got to say, you mentioned imagistic. I've never heard that word. Um, I'm glad I always learn something from you, and. As you were saying that, I was thinking of this book that Robin wrote, oh, yeah. uh, uh, Shortcuts to Songwriting for Film and TV, because you spend a lot of time in here talking about how universal lyrics, they can't use a bunch of specific images that would be conflicting with the scene. A you know, if you're talking storyline details, right. yeah, as this yeah. one does. And yet, the chorus of this song, Ooh, Hazy, Hazy, is works really well for something like film and TV because it's got a vibe and it feels, it has an emotional feel to it. But the lyric in the verse doesn't support it. We got to Ooh, Hazy, Hazy, and I didn't have a feel, any feel for what the singer thinks that Hazy, Hazy, what it feels like, like in the singer's body. Mm -hmm. there, now, we do go into verse two, but actually I did read ahead, and it doesn't go there. So what you might want to do with a song like this is work backwards from your chorus and start right at the beginning with how hazy you make me feel, how I lose, how I lose my Ooh, sense of edges, I like that, writing how I have the clouds in my head, how I, yeah. There's so many wonderful hazy images. Uh, I just want to add one thing before we move on, which is the the synthesizer sounded like an Oberheim said that wow 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 uh, low end synth, great sounding synth, but again made it sound dated, very uh, dated back to a Bee Gees production in like 1979. So while that can be cool to give stuff a retro feel mm -hmm. in the context of all the stuff that made it sound dated that Robin talks about, it makes it sound more dated. And you have to put it in a production context that's more com more contemporary right. if you're going to do it. Yeah, that's those blends that are so popular now. We have a lot of blends out there. All the kids are doing it. Hit it. Uh, next up, we have Shine In, Shine Out. Let the light shine in. Let the light shine in. Let it flow into your soul till your spirit feels whole. Let the light shine in. You know there's lots of bad blood that's infecting us today, and there's really no attempt to see things someone else's way. But we can choose to spread some cheer and lighten someone's load instead of letting darkness lead us down a gloomy dead end road. Let the light shine in. Let the light shine in Let it flow into your soul Till your spirit feels whole Let the light shine in Let your light shine out Let your light shine out Spread the glow all around you The shadow can't be found Let your light shine out Okay, got it so Good Uh, it opens with uh, half a chorus, which is a nice idea for this song. It sets up the feel and the track is light and kind of bubbly, which is really nice. So when we get to the first line of the verse, it's a little bit of a jarring thing to say, you know, there's lots of bad blood that's infecting us. That's a pretty heavy line to come after let the light shine in. So what I want to say is contrast. Yes, contrast. <laughs> a little too much contrast. You can do that, but it's a little too much. And, it, and we weren't expecting it, and so it pulls the, you've set up a nice feel and then pulled the listener right out of it, which listeners don't like to do. They won't go there. Um, one thing I really want to suggest, songs of social commentary and social protest, I think they're wonderful, and I think people should be writing them, and I especially think they should be writing them now. Um, uh, but what I want to say is, for today's audiences, it's probably not your best bet to tell people what they should feel. Um, we could get away with it in the 60s because it was so novel. It was such an unusual thing. But now, if you tell someone how to feel, they will pull back from mm -hmm. that. So instead of let, your, let the love shine in, let the love shine in. You heard this in a song like, in a, in like Hair. This was, you know, let your love shine. Um, you could do it. But here, it makes people feel like they're being told what to feel. Instead, songs are much better at making people actually feel the thing. So you've got the track for it, and you've got the melody for it. Instead of telling us about it, 
Make us feel it. What does it feel to bring light into the darkness, to walk into that room and turn the light on and turn up the floodlights and open the ceiling and let the sun in and give us all those emo those emotionally those emotional trigger words heat warmth light then you can do some opposites to those but today's listeners really want to feel it physically they want that emotion inside them they want to share it with you not be told what to do from outside in all right wow perfect two minutes good job oh, good. um okay good job yeah this is there's a lot here a lot of potential here. I, I can't believe how you can just rattle this stuff up you gotta know she's listened to like 15 seconds of some if not all of these songs and her notes are you could fit them on a matchbook cover so she's doing most of this by shooting from the hip which shows how talented she really is oh thank you um okay uh let's see next one is big green chair <laughs> Maybe I'll just stay home and live out my life alone. Wait for the telephone, leave the porch light on. Nice, Sit in my big green chair, the one that we used to share. Look out my window instead and think about you someday. shorter claps okay. <laughs> real short ones um beautiful opening i loved the double verse at the top maybe i'll just stay home live out my life alone it's a beautiful opening i immediately went oh you know i know i get who this person is and what he's feeling i really like that wait by the telephone leave the porch light on um so there's hope leaving the porch light porch light on suggests there's hope there that he's wishing for something that for someone to return it's really a nice opening four lines um, same thing with the next four lines, sit in my big green chair, so you introduce the green chair there, the one we used to share, look out my window and stare, think about you somewhere. Very nice, easy going rhyme, there's just four line rhymes here, and they're very easy going, natural sounding. Nice job on this, Tim. Um, good melody too, good repetition, nice forward momentum in these verses. The chorus is what's making me a little concerned here. Because the lyric of the chorus is telling us what we already know. It's as if it's continuing to tell the story. I will be waiting, hope you won't be fading, which really worries me. That almost sounds like it's written to the rhyme. That one's the first time I felt like the rhyme started to be forced. Um, we were best friends, why did it end? In other words, you're still explaining to me what went, now you're explaining to me, this should be the second verse if you're going to do this. We don't need to know it. The truth is we don't need to know that. We already picked it up on it. And, and it, the truth is, it doesn't matter whether you're best friends or you're, or you're lovers or you're both or you're, I mean, best friends and lovers, we were, you know, we had both. You can do that very quickly in a verse. I'm a little concerned that it's coming up and that having to wait till the chorus and hear you're saying it. What is the job of a chorus? Co job of the chorus is to express the emotional heart of the song and to get that emotion across to the listener in a way that makes the listener feel it too. Rather than adding detail, yes. not the place. Yeah, not telling, don't tell me the, the details of the storyline in the chorus. So I'm going to suggest something you can try, which is cut to, it's also the chorus is very long drawn out, which is good contrast to the verse, but it's too long and it lost all the energy. So I would suggest cutting from the end of the, of the verse, think about you somewhere, to two together, two together, it's only me now in my big green chair. Boom, you're done. And that'll work like a refrain rather than a full chorus. And then you go right into your next verse. And your next verse is, well, we were friends and lovers and we had, and you and I giggled and laughed and we, whatever you want to say, do that in a verse. 
and keep your chorus focused on the loneliness and that sense of loss. And if the big green chair is what you feel is the best metaphor for that, then keep that. Um, but you have to really make us feel it. Brilliant. Thank you. Absolutely Will. brilliant. Well, um, <laughs> I haven't I, met anybody I really want to date yet. <laughs> I, I can't believe how you can pull so much out so quickly. Um, just whatever. Uh, amazing to me. All right. Moving on. The next one is, can you do it like this? Okay. I'll date that one. Okay. <laughs> yeah, very very nice blend song. Lots of 80s overlays in the, from the in the synth and things like that. But at the same time, it's got that heavy, uh, powerful, constant beat. Plenty of repetition. Lots of uh, fun, light references in the lyrics. And this kind of thing works really well for commercials. This is the kind of thing that Target stores use. Um, lots of clothing stores that appeal to that youth market. Um, reminds me, there are a lot of, of references here, um, uh, Asteroids Galaxy Tour uh, that's been used in commercials before and Black Keys, which get used a lot. Um, there's a lot of that as well and it, everything about it is working really well. Uh, Production-wise, it just needed more bottom end. Oh gosh, yes. It, it was oh, really yes. skinny on the bottom end, which totally distracted me and I kept wanting to listen more about the way the song was put together, but the bottom end was just... You yes, uh, I want you, there's a, a song by, I think it's Fits in the Tantrums, mm -hmm. uh, called Hand Clap. Look at that bass. Right. And copy it. I'm not the notes, but copy the mix on that bass. You want that bass. Great suggestion. Absolutely, good call. Good call. Um, okay, moving on. We are right on time target. Excellent. Uh, Unbreakable is the next one up. No, I think this chorus is coming up. Okay. Good. Good, good. Good. I've got you trained to clap now. With yes, yes. It's hard to resist. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, infectious. <laughs> Uh, this is really good. I like this a lot. Um, I like the fresh rhymes in the verse, uh, fury in the silence. I like the imagery as you take away horizons. No running from this island. 
I will make my own boat and sail it. Eh, I'm not so sure about that line, but that's okay. Um, it's the it's the energy, it's the feel. I really like the vocal on this. I like the the that marchy, powerful beat that really underscores this lyric, especially an opening line with the word fury in it. It right away sets that up for the listener. So it's got a good contemporary listener draw in. It's really going to pull today's listeners in. I'm stronger than all the wind that's blowing back. Oh, I'm wiser than made my choice. I've seen through that. Um, this is a good rhythmic. Um, it's got a good rhythmic chorus. I would actually l be interested in hearing this song again, um, but it seemed to be working well. I like there was enough contrast between the verse and chorus. Um, it seemed like it wanted to end on, they don't shake me up, they just wake me up. That did seem like it's, it's where you were starting to, to fade out. Um, it seemed like it was the end of a chorus and I could see there were two more lines. I don't think the two more lines add anything. They're kind of a post-chorus, I guess, but if you're going to do that, I would probably do them as either um, ch play around with the melody on those, raise it up, give it something more rhythmical, something to break it up so that when you go into the next verse, the listener has had a break from the ba -da 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 -da, those two notes, which you're really hammering on in that chorus and then the post-chorus. And you could really use that post-chorus to give a break. Listeners today really like plenty of contrast, whether that's in the rhythm or it's in the note range or it's in the pace of the note of the notes and the words. I really felt like from a production perspective that this had another 20% that it could go. Again, needed more bottom. I even um, double checked mm. the bass knob on my uh, stereo to make sure <laughs> stereo to make sure that the cleaning crew didn't tweak it when I wasn't here. Um, I would have added some more male vocals to the chorus vocal. I felt that it needed more production contrast. The contrast from the songwriting perspective was there, and they could have taken a little farther, but that song's really, really good. Good. Good, good. Yeah, I like it, too. All right, next up. Plasms. Plasms. Yes. Okay, let's have a listen. Yes. People are always saying, when you guys talk about ear candy and you talk about um, hooks in and throughout the song, that guitar lick was an example of what we're talking about. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. yeah. Very catchy. I like the guitar work throughout. Yeah, I really like the, the guitar sound right at the top, the whole intro. I like the guitar sound. Um, I like the vocal. It has attitude. It has character in it. It's the kind of thing that film and TV likes. Um, this is an interesting... Um, an interesting song. It, it's pulling towards 80s um, in the melody, but it wasn't bothering me. It certainly could be used f for some film and TV uses. I think my concern here is the lyrics. 
it opens really well, really strongly with following the most spectacular signs, a place that's poised for romancing tonight. So now as a listener, I'm right there going, oh, this is going to be a really, it's already a very vibey song. It's going in a direction that looks like it's going to be an interesting relationship song or a date, a date night song or something with a nice quirky twist to it. I was really drawn into it. And then the word plasms, <laughs> which is also the title. So I don't know why the, uh, plasms and, and plasms go and look for brothers. It's a picturesque time for trying love you. And so by the last line, love you, we're back to where we started. But then there's two lines that push the listener away from that. So it's one thing, if, you're, if you want to go really indie, and, and there's plenty of indie stuff out there with lyrics that you go, what does that mean, you know? It's nonlinear. And I'm, I really like nonlinear lyrics, but the trick of writing nonlinear or associative lyrics is to make sure that all the images and the words you're using have similar emotional associations for the listener. Right, so otherwise you're bouncing I'm, all over. I can't, yeah. yeah, I'm shut out. Yeah. Because emotionally I can't stay there. So if you check out a song, one of my favorite associative lyrics is uh, Violet Hill by Coldplay. It's an early song. And if you look at that, the images are magnificent. They all have that same dark, wintry, giant, impersonal feel. And then when the singer sings, if you love me, won't you let me know, it means so much because the, all of the lyrics make you feel cold and distant. So that's the trick of writing associative lyrics. Um, and this one, with that kind of vocal and that kind of track, I really think you should take a look at the lyrics. There's a section in the book, um, tension and release, add energy and dynamics to your song, how to use contrast in the note range. I, I felt that it's almost a theme, not with every single song we've heard today, but several of them melodically just don't quite get where where you tell people to go in the book. That some of them fall, a lot of them fell a little short. They stayed within a very tight range and there wasn't that moment where it kind of grabbed you melodically. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, just throwing that out there. Yeah, this one has a refrain book. rather than a chorus. I'm breathing for you, which is a very powerful line. But yeah, a contrast, again, as I just mentioned a minute ago, contrast can be created in melody in several different ways. And I'll, I'll keep trying to bring those up. But of course, note range, uh, pace of the words and notes, and rhythmical patterns, rhythmical and, and uh, patterns of words and phrases can really re define your verse and, and chorus and set them apart from each other. And today's listeners are really used to that. It's very contemporary to be very clear about your, about your, um, your structure. It's hard. I think people get so wrapped up in, in solving one problem that they may overlook that there are other oh, things sure. that they can yeah. find. Yeah, and it's hard to see and hear your own song. It's very hard to hear your own song. Uh, so we're going to keep listening to your songs for you, uh, and the next one up is Feeling Alive. Lots of rock energy, rock and roll. Um, it's a good energetic track. I'd like to hear um, the verse. There's, there's a, here's, there's something missing here. There's a, the repetitive chorus. I'm alive now, alive now, alive now, baby, alive now, alive now. It's fine. You can get away with that. 
But in order to get away with that, you have to give the listener more before you get to that. So the listener goes, yeah, I feel alive too. And what we got in the, what is, sounds like the verse, there's a time, the opening lines, there's a time I'm going to put all the lights on me. Is an, that's an interesting phrase. That's an interesting line. But what does that mean? And all, uh, there's a time it gets repeated. Time I'm going to put on the lights, no time to waste. I'm going to shine all the lights on me. Now is the time because I'm feeling alive. It doesn't make us feel alive. We, it's a song about the singer, and the singer is singing to himself, basically. And we need to open that up for, for a contemporary song that reaches out, because listeners are so involved here. Keep your listener by your side when you're writing. You know, be, be sure that you do that. If, if where you want to take this is outside of your bedroom, you need to be thinking about your listener. So tell us what it feels like that to be, you know, you're hit, you've got lightning inside. You've got the power. You've got, you know, what are all the words that have those kinds of big living associations? I'm, um, elect, I'm, on, I'm, I'm electric. I'm like a neon sign. I'm like a city full of neon signs. I'm Las Vegas all night long. I'm, you know, just give us that whole c- cascade of images that make us feel what you're feeling. Then when you get to let me do it, be the one to do it all like this. I'm a man and I'm just catching my stride, which is the first place where we find out why he feels this way. And it's a good line. It's a really good line. I would put that first in that section. Let me be the one to rock you all like this. The time is now I'm feeling alive. I like that line. Everybody's included. Let's all rock. I'm alive. How about saying I'm alive, I'm alive, we're alive. How about changing it up? in the chorus. It, uh, it has a big lack of inclusion. Yeah. And it's the kind of song where it could be hands in the air yeah. and feel that and he doesn't go there. It's all about me. It reminds me of the character that Russell Brand plays oh. uh, and Take Me to the Greek. Get yeah. Me to the Greek. To it's the Greek. all about him, which I get. It's a rock star thing. But this could be so inclusive. and beca- It's anthemic and it's that close to yeah. being... Uh. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, I'm amazed. I, I've known Robin for I don't know, twelve, thirteen years or something. I'm blushing. I, I'm amazed every time, every single friggin' time. I don't know. I'm sitting there listening to you, going, "How the hell does she retain all this?" It'd be impressive enough to observe it and understand it and be able to remark on it. The fact that you've got this like encyclopedia of stuff in your head, <laughs> freakish, in a good way. Anyway, okay, moving on. Next, we are going to hear Whisper.
nice production on this. Uh, I really like it, except for the wah 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 sound, which you should probably just delete. Um, Are you t you're talking about the Aboriginal? Uh, what, yeah, what the did did they, you do? Yeah, the like did you do yeah, bass so what part? Yeah, it did sound like yeah. 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 Um, yeah, it's fighting with the lead vocalist, and it's also fighting with the style of the of the your gorgeous production. Absolutely beautiful track. Um, uh, it cuts through right where you don't want it to, and it draws the listener's ear away from the singer's vibe and all, and the tra vibe of the track. So I would just cut it. I don't think you need it. Um, this is, I would say, this is dream pop, um, and and it's very close to dream pop. Um, dream pop has these kinds of uh, very loose, flowing lyrics, um, which this has. Um, doesn't necessarily track in a linear fashion, but still the emotion is clear. It's, it's very romantic, typical of dream pop. Um, the mix on the vocal is not as dream pop as it should be. So what I would recommend with this, um, I also think there's a very long, uh, there's a very long instrumental in there before you get to whisper soft, whisper sweet. I would probably move that structurally, move that earlier, and then do your big break, your build, and then come back to whisper soft, whisper sweet. Maybe you do that. Uh, we didn't listen all the way through. So uh, check out Beach House, Youth Lagoon, uh, the XX, you know the 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 Dream Pop, and and check your uh, mix. Use a reference song because you're clearly in that genre, and you want to make sure that you that you fall into it comfortably. I'm going to add two cents to this one, which was, uh, for my money, it was one of the more contemporary ones, because we're talking about mm -hmm. contemporary today. It was contemporary in style, contemporary in the vocal approach, that that almost reverby, ethereal, mm -hmm. disconnected indie, you know, I, I can't, I'm not finding the right words, but the vocal approach was really indie and very contemporary. Something in there that you guys may or may not have picked up on with the drum turnarounds. Um, I to do boop -ba -doo, very oh, old-fashioned drum mm. turnaround. So it's kind of a giveaway that there was somebody working on it um, that had old production chops but was steered in the right direction by the other person. I'm guessing that the young lady who sang this was the writer and somebody else contributed to it. So just be aware. Listen to modern music and listen to the drum turns, the, the fills. They won't sound like doop, boop, boop, boop. That's yeah. very 70s. 80s. Yeah, we have co-writers here, and I think one is probably the, the producer and, and uh, one is the singer, right. and, and they're both writers. Um, yeah, and reference tracks can really keep you on target. That was really a good call. I didn't notice that. And that's what uh, I do. he's absolutely right <laughs> about that. What, one little thing can give you away. A guitar sound that's dated will give away a country song in a second. Right. Um, and, and a music supervisor will hear that, and they may not even notice why, but they'll turn right off if they hear that drum fill. They'll yep. just, you'll, you'll lose them. Something as simple as that. So use reference songs for production, for you know melody rhythms, for ideas, for techniques you can bring in and keep your song in a genre because a contemporary genre will guide you uh, to where you need to go rather than just using your creativity the whole time and then ending up saying what genre am I in absolutely and I people are a little freaked out by the fact that a music supervisor might go I really love this but I don't love the didgeridoo or I don't love those drum turns so I'm not going to use it well call me up tell me to fix it they don't have the timeline they don't they, they're not going to wait for you to fix it and what if you don't fix it well they just need to move on and find something today right now that they can play tomorrow in that meeting yes so. You got to get it all right. Yeah. Okay. Next up is Home, Where the Heart Is. Thank you. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, this one, uh, the lyric is very focused. It's very clear what the writer is writing about. The, the core idea is very clear right from the title on down, which is good. Um, but there's a lot of really uh, overly familiar uh, phrases and lines. The lyric is staying on the surface. And, and listen, today's listeners really want to go deeper uh, into what's happening to the singer and what the singer is feeling. They really want to feel like they're a fly on the wall in a peak moment. This song is scooting over the top of the water. And it, it runs out of things to say very quickly because it's not going deeper into a peak moment. Instead, it's spread out. It's saying things, when I walk through my front door, there's nothing else I want more than to see your smiling face. Well, the listener at that point is not engaged because we don't see anybody. We, we don't know it's somebody's smiling face. He feels this way. We have to take the singer at his word. And listeners today are a lot more leery about trusting people. Um, it's a sad fact, but true. You have to make us feel what you feel. What is it about that smiling face and that door and that day that made you feel like home is absolutely where your heart is and nowhere else? You have to take us deeper into that moment. You stand at the front door, it opens, you see her, and you go, my God, I'm home. And that's what listeners need. That's what contemporary listeners need. So when you find yourself writing, I may travel town to town, uh, what, is he a salesman? I mean, wh why is this even important to us as listeners unless you make it important to us? So keep your listener in mind and why the listener should care. Get the listener to feel what you feel, which is pick a moment, take us deeper into it so we can feel what you're feeling and then we can go, oh yeah, I've had that feeling too. I love that feeling or I want to feel that feeling. I've never felt it and I really wish I could. I know it's out there somewhere. I really want that. And you listen to the song over and over to get that feeling again. Um... I want to add that the production on this sounded dated, as long as we're talking about contemporary or not. Um, it sounded very Eddie Rabbit era. Um, I love Eddie. I, I loved Eddie, too. I, loved Eddie. Um, I did. And, and I love the, the sound of the guitar fills and the playing were great, but the whole thing put together made it sound very dated. And as I was listening, I was thinking, yeah. you know what, thematically, if your lyric suggestions were incorporated and you stripped this down and gave it just like, you could almost do it a cappella with hand claps and a cajon. Thematically, this would work really well for mm -hmm. commercials. It could be, oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. you know, uh, what's a keep the light on, Tom Baudet, what's a mm -hmm. whatever. Motel 6. Motel 6 would yeah. be great for that. It would also be really cute for a dog commercial, mm -hmm. uh, dog food commercial. You know, yeah. the, the dog is so happy that the master came home. There are parts this would work well, but it just needs to sound more modern. So think about trying a strip down approach maybe it's just an acoustic guitar and hand claps but leave the eddie rabbit part on the shelf good well done you know there i got a compliment from robin hey <laughs> go <laughs> mikey <laughs> thank you <laughs> you think there were songs in the 90s that were hits i mean uh um i'm thinking about tim mcgraw's first hit i mean it was it stayed on the surface the whole time. Yeah. It was 1994. And that lyric just stayed on the surface. It would not be a hit now. People right. wouldn't give it the time of day now. Uh, some of the Randy Travis hits were huge, worldwide hits. And you look at some of them, and you go, man, that's just sitting on the surface. Today's listeners just don't go there. By the way, uh, speaking of Tim McGraw, if you guys haven't seen the Tim McGraw Faith Hill special, it's polished, it's slick, and... and but it's good. It really, really, really is oh, okay. good. Uh, it's a, a concert special with a lot of behind the scenes stuff. It's it's good. Um, okay, next one up. Uh, where am I? I am going oh. to Lava, Love Er. There's some bottom. Oh yeah. Something. No one understands my heart Like you do, like you do, like you do No one understands how long Secretly I've been wanting to Started with the spark Then the fire we ignited was too hot
Good. Good. There's a nice, a really nice sensuous vibe about it. It's really good. I, I'm not sure if this is intended. I think it's intended to be EDM. Um, uh, you know, electronic dance music. I think it's meant to be a dance track, but it doesn't have the in, the more aggressive beat that would it would need in the chorus to be a really good dance track. So, as a reference, I would definitely, for several reasons, suggest that you uh, take a look at um, Zed. Um, I have my cheat sheet over here. The Middle, um, Wolves, Selena Gomez, Ellie Goulding, Burn. You know. And any of her stuff, David Guetta, Calvin Harris, I would be taking a look at those for production and how you want to build up to your chorus and then make the chorus something irresistibly danceable. At the same time, it would also simplify the lyric in your chorus. You've got a good verse that really is very suggestive and sensual, and it gets it gets the idea that this guy and the gal are really, um, you know, together and they're they're kind of you know dancing to the same beat. But then we get into the chorus, and it can kind of continues to be like a verse lyric. Remember where that came up earlier today? Mm -hmm. Look me in the eyes, do that thing you do one button at a time. That's probably the next verse. And the chorus should be much more, um, call me your lover, uh, when you call me your lover, when you call me your lover. I mean, if you take a look at Burn, uh, there's so much repetition in these things. Um, you can look at, a, uh, some of the other songs have more are more lyric oriented, like, um, the middle, uh, the Z hit right now, No Promises by Cheat Codes with Demi Lovato. They have more lyrics, but the lyrics are in the verses, not the choruses. So you want an irresistibly danceable hook in your chorus that is suggestive. Call me your lover, call me your lover, when you call me your lover, you know. Then you could do one button at a time if you want to in the chorus. Um, Undress me one button at a time. Call me your lover. Call me your lover. You can vary it a little bit, but stick with the repetition a little bit more. That undress course. me one button at a time stuff, that'll get you arrested. Now, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but subscribe. <laughs> do subscribe. Yeah, um, yeah. No innuendo in songs anymore because that'll get you arrested. I'm kidding. Uh, I have a suggestion uh, from production point of view. Um, I really like that. I thought that it was pretty darn contemporary. An octave vocal part uh, mm, yeah. on yeah, yeah, on two lines in the chorus, and now it's off, and I don't remember which two lines. But an octave vocal part would set it apart, create mm -hmm. the contrast, but without you could take it as is, just add that, and it would. Solve and the it problem. puts the woman in there as well if you use a female to do it, right. which is really it's it's a guy girl song. You could even have this as a duet, have her sing the second verse. Would be kind of hip. Yeah. Yeah, and cool. we're seeing a lot of that in right. today's EDM. We are. Well done. Um, yep. Okay, moving on. This one is called Love in the Shadows. Okay.
good, really good. Beautiful opening two verses, um, wonderful vocal, wonderful production, um, very intriguing lyric on verse one and verse two. Um, I love the lines, uh, maybe I should tell you I've gone to hell and back, the whole thing. You really get a feel for who the singer is and the, vo the voice is right for that singer. Very intriguing, pulled me right in those two verses. The chorus sounds more like a pre-chorus to me. I would suggest uh, dividing the chorus in half and just use the first two lines as a pre-chorus. All I really need tonight is, your, is an arm around my shoulders to hold me close and tell me life is good and rise that up and then break into your time, still time, still time. And I'd like to hear that have more momentum to it. This is very, very slow. It's really slowed down in the in what you're calling the chorus, all I really need tonight section. Instead of, instead of picking up the pace and picking up the energy as a chorus would normally do, um, this seems to slow it down. For a pre-chorus, you can get away with that. And, and that really builds tension. It builds tension. And if you rise those last few words, tell me life is good, and then you go into still time with something and, and weave that with something simple. Again, this is actually not EDM. This is probably electro pop. I think that's where you're headed with that. And I would take a look at some of the uh, good electro pop. I don't think I have any here. Um, you haven't memorized every one of them? I know. See, I have my cheat sheets here. <laughs> I brought my I'm surprised because she could do this stuff pretty much from um, the hip. You can look at uh, a Wolves, which I just mentioned, and that's a hit right now on the EDM charts, but you can take a look at that. Selena Gomez, the song is Wolves. Really good lyric. You should really take a look at that if you're writing in this style. And you can take a look at Lana Del Rey and see how she's handling something like Summertime Sadness. Um, these choruses tend to have more momentum to them, and they tend to really move and spill forwards. So that's why they can get away with simple lyrics. It's all about the rhythm of the words and the momentum of the chorus um, and create more of an energetic contrast there uh, in your chorus. I really like the song. I love the production. I did take a listen to this last night and um, uh, I was really impressed with this. Super like contemporary. Teacher. Yeah. Uh, and you know what? You guys all saw it. I could see it in the chat room. Everybody's talking okay. about it. Um, it's just when it all comes together, it's obvious. What we're trying to do is teach people who it's not obvious to to think in terms of this kind of production and song craft that goes with it because it's all got to work in concert. Yeah. Uh, okay, moving on. Um, next one is Shine. <laughs> really nice hook simple uh refrain line shine i'm gonna shine you make me shine it's really nice it's simple it's easy it's the kind of thing you can see in a commercial pretty easily you know anything that wants an uplifting light feel to it um i would uh probably cut the first uh chorus in half it's an introductory chorus remember when you start with a chorus that the listener doesn't know anything about what the song is about and so you kind of give it away but the the listener doesn't have anything that built up to it so i would keep that i would do that about half the length it's a nice way to intro the song um 
I was a lonely soul. You you pulled me from the gloom. Gloom is it bothers me a little. It sounds a little bit like it's there for the rhyme with room. So for a song like this with this wonderful vocal on it, absolutely gorgeous vocal, um, and an R, light R and B feel, I think I would probably want to go towards a more conversational comfortably conversational style. We don't use gloom every day. I don't say things like, gee, hi, Michael, I'm, I just came in from the gloom. Not um, unless you live in London. That's true. That's true. <laughs> or oh, Seattle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would just be careful. That does seem like gloom and room seem like they're, they're not too as easy. fresh as they need to be. Yeah, they're a little too easy, a little too familiar. And when you've got not a lot of lineage here, you want to make the most of every line you've got. He's, you're doing a lot of clever things. You radiate the room. You're everything um, I'm not, and that's what makes us hot. I can barely barely touch you with thousand solar watts. There's a lot of thinking going on here about how to get that shine idea in, but I'm a little worried that the emotion is getting lost in the cleverness. And it's one of the things you know I always say, which is uh, that uh, songcraft is there at the service of the emotion. It should never overtake the emotion. And it feels like it might be overtaking just a little bit here. So oh, I say would, that again. That was really deep. And <laughs> songcraft should be at the service, the service of, of the emotion, emotion. Always. Yeah, it's in my books. I know. It's but, all over my books. <laughs> um, yeah, just, always at the service of the emotion and never overtake it. Because when, when songcraft overtakes emotion and becomes about songcraft, the listener knows. Then listeners feel the deviciness of it, and they have they have radar for that. They may not be ever be able to verbalize right. the things that I say, but they feel the things that I say. So uh, a lot of times I'm just listening the way a listener would, and I'm trying to verbalize. How is that feel. even possible for you? I know it's impossible for me to listen to anything and not hear. I would have had the hi hat louder, a little more kick drum. Right. Yeah. Um, how can you listen to anything? Like a listener. Yeah, and not and be clinical still... because you are wired to be so analytical in a good way. Yeah, you but you have to feel. You have to listen like a listener first. I can't do you it anymore. You have to do that because that's how the song hits you and how, how it hits the listener. That tells you. When the songcraft is getting racing ahead, yeah. or whether you, where it's slowed down, or where your interest drops out, and you can feel it, it's physical. That's I, one of the things why I say emotion is physical. I really, really, really try to turn it all off and just listen as a recreational, you know, passerby, if you will. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and I can't. I just yeah. can't do it. I look I just forward train to the yourself. Day. Yeah, you yeah. just train yourself. It's the same way you train yourself to hear that snare. You know, oh, I can hear that snare. And yeah, my wife always says I can hear a pin drop in the kitchen when we're upstairs mm -hmm. in the bedroom at night, but I can't yeah. hear her. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not selective. It's not. It's just, I've got a thing for high frequencies. Um, yes, and really that's my only, that's, that's all I have to say about it. It's a gorgeous track and a gorgeous vocal. And when you listen to a song, I mean, that, whoever that vocalist is, um, it reminds me of uh, that song, When I Call You Home, that was used in the commercial CenturyLink commercial I played oh, at, the, right. at the road rally, Kelvin Jones. And um, it has that easygoing quality that you just believe. You, you, it's, it's authentic. You believe it. You believe everything he says. It's got a Steve Winwood-esque vibe to it in a contemporary setting that I noticed. Very I, nice. I, I wrote Steve Winwood down. Anyway. Very nice, yeah. doesn't mean Just anything. see if Susan uh, was around. Um, okay, Susan next worked. we have New Place to Go. Uh, has a contemporary vibe to it for sure 
it sounds to me like it was probably written for a commercial or to pitch to a commercial. Um, it's hitting all the right notes of, in terms of the lyric. Uh, golden, wide open. The, the, the vocal, the verbal palette is really focused, really clear. Let's chase a dream to see where it's going. Through the mountains, through the city, makes no difference as long as you're with me. Um, you know, it just, it's hitting all the right notes. Um, so I would say, you know, for somebody like Nutella, their commercial, they use a, this artist named Oh Hush. And it's very much like that. It's Spread the Happiness was the song that Nutella used. And they're, uh, very, they're, they're all nuts. They're all, they're, they're <laughs> very on the nose, you know, they're kind of on the nose. So for commercial pitches, this is really good. Um, uh, I think Michael might have something to say about the production. No, I, I liked it. Um, did I say something Based? before? The, oh, yes, the bottom end wasn't there. I, I was busy paying attention to the lyric on this one. I agree with oh. Robin that it was super well written yeah. for, um, you know, uh, like a Subaru spot, any kind of car thing. Yeah, it, it's obvious. It's, well, it's, and it's, it could use some bottom end. They do use them uh, like this, but I have to say, you're not going to get a car commercial with this. Because uh, it's too no, on the nose? it's too on the nose, and it, it doesn't go deep enough. You, they want real singer-songwriter songs and real band songs for things like uh, Volkswagen and, and Subaru. So, no, but Nutella, uh, breakfast cereals will do something like this. Um, <laughs> Speaking of Subaru, I've got uh, I've got to tell a story. Every episode's got one. Um, so, had dinner at a friend's house on Friday night. This guy's had a Subaru since, like, 2005, and he loves this car. Um, he asked me to go out in the garage for something at his house, and he had a Porsche SUV in there. And he goes, I loved that Subaru. <laughs> I loved past tense. <laughs> he upgraded. Okay, uh, next one is Let's Give It a Try. trying to think what to say it's beautifully produced and I love the vocal a lot of Smokey Robinson in there and there's a lot of Motown in the feel of it overall mm -hmm. in the groove and everything it's really really nice um, the as far as contemporary I don't know that this is going to appeal to today's listeners Ed Sheeran does this so well and Bruno Mars they take this period and they update it in a way that makes it more compelling for today's listeners. So I think the best thing I would say, rather than try to be specific, because I can't, I can't really give you specifics on this, um, because I think that the lyric is right for the style. Um, but if you take a look at Ed Sheeran, when he does this kind of thing, like thinking out loud, you really get these kind of quirky lines that you don't expect. 
you know, at least one in every section, one or two. And it helps. And then it's a little bit, uh, this is the kind of song I would probably want to listen to two or three more times before I gave you any more specific feedback than that. I would take a look at reference tracks. Um, you know, uh, Ed Sheeran is a good reference for this. And take a look at how he updates this. I think his new one, I think Perfect, is also a blend, um, very similar to Thinking Out Loud. Take a look at that and see if you can pick up some pointers in the production that would give this production a little bit more of a contemporary feel. Another song called Classic by MK2, M, the letters MK and the Roman numeral 2. Um, classic. And take a look at how they updated Motown. Um, a lot of times it's in the drums. Uh, it, it'll give you a much more um, driving feel in the drums. It'll pick it up, but you still keep that laid back feel in the vocal and in the track. That's really all I have to say. It's beautiful. It's really nice. It's awesome. Amanda just pointed out in the chat room, we need more likes for the video. So there you go. That button right there. That's called a like. We need more because Amanda says so. We love her. All right. Uh, yeah. Ed Sheeran. You know, every generation of music has a couple of people that will be remembered long after their current. He's one of those. I'm pretty sure, yeah. yeah he's yeah, it's hard guy, to tell sometimes, but I'm pretty sure. Got that. it together. Yeah. Um, and There's a lot of blends going on. Le uh, John Legend, uh, check out uh, some of John Legend's stuff and see if that gives you some ideas. But I'm more inclined to think Ed Sheeran on this. Um, and you should try some references for the rhythm groove. Nice, though. Very, very well done. Uh, next one is called The Angels Came to Me Last Night. Yeah, it's a beautiful vocal. I love the voice on this a lot. It's just right for the song. It's innocent, very youthful. It's really beautiful, very contemporary, contemporary vocal sound on this. That singer could do a lot of different uh, singer-songwriter type things. Gabrielle Applin, that type of thing. Nice, nice one. Uh, looks like the singer might be a co-writer too, so that's really excellent. Um, I would say uh, the melody is contemporary for singer-songwriter, um, but it's uh, the verse melody, the lines are very long in the verse and also in the chorus. So I'm going to make a structural suggestion, which is I would probably cut the chorus down to the first two lines. Honey, you know where I am because the angels are holding up my star and it's right next to yours. That's a beautiful statement of what I think the song is about. It really gets to the emotional heart of the song. Put a period on that. End it right there. And make that a refrain line at the end of the verse. 
move that up to the end of your verse. And then underneath your verse, right from the beginning of the song, put a little pulsing djembe or tom, you know, just something to keep, to get the pulsing groove going, because that way the melody won't sound like it's wandering. It's not wandering. It just sounds like it is because it's kind of left out there in the open all by itself. It needs either a rhythm, acoustic rhythm guitar, or it needs some kind of pulse down there on a low, soft kind of a tom beat or something. And that'll help anchor that melody with that beautiful floating voice. It'll help anchor that. And then that melody will make a lot more sense. And it's a very, and it'll be a very nice contemporary song. The fiddle comes in right there, and I don't think this is an indie folk I, I think that's probably the wrong instrument for that spot. It's definitely bringing in a folk uh, feel to it, and I don't think the melody sounds particularly indie folk to me. It sounds like singer-songwriter to me. Uh, so check out Gabrielle Applin, see if there's any ideas there for production that you could use. If you're going to go more towards the, if you want to go towards indie folk or folk style, I would take a look at bringing that feel in earlier. Maybe acoustic rhythm guitar will do that for you. All right, um, moving on. Just a few more to go. The next one is called... Oh, and nice I want to mention, uh, that was the only song I've heard in my entire lifetime. Congratulations on getting the word asphyxiates in your lyric. Difficult, clearly achievable. Oh, that's in the next verse. We didn't get yeah, that. Yeah, we didn't get that far, but it's on the lyric sheet. And <laughs> Did I'm I impressed. miss that word? <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, moving on. Next song is called At the End of the Road. Feelings that flow between us both work. I would first take a breath out loud to explore the difference when you came into this story. Empty days filled up with life. going on here and uh, it can be contemporary the production here is not making it sound contemporary but it, it could be and the way to do that is to spend some time listening to the weepies mm. the melody makes these all these left turns it's very quirky and interesting and you can get away with that if the production is supporting it and you also have the voices for doing that as well you have these voices that are very direct very uh, right out front to the listener we're saying and singing this now and <laughs> yeah and it's very much what the weepies do and also, you could listen to Patrick and Eugene, and you could listen to Bare Naked Ladies and the Milk Carton Kids, and um, get some interesting ideas for production and also for delivering the song vocally, so that um, you might want to split this up structurally, get to your chorus a little bit sooner, maybe cut your chorus in half, that kind of thing, and just do some restructuring. But there's potential here for a contemporary, fun, quirky song that that uh, has a lot of appeal. The Weepies are, are big time. In, in the current state, it's almost like a Broadway play where they sing the script. Yes. Uh, and it's got a, a cuteness about it. It There's does. No yeah. question, but it's not contemporary. If someone asked me to explain how the feelings that flow between us both work, <laughs> I would first take a breath out loud to explore. I mean, it's really cute. It's really, really clever. I like it. Oh, man, years ago I went with Ralph Murphy and a couple other big songwriters in Nashville to the Bluebird one night, and a guy and a girl did 
an entire like Broadway play at the Bluebird. And oh. it was very, the whole thing was like this, and it was hysterical and wonderful. <laughs> so there's a place in the world for this, just not yes, on oh, yeah. not on hit radio. All right, next one is called Endlessly. That made the hair on my arm stand up a little. Did it? Yep. It's a beautiful vocal. Absolutely beautiful vocal for this song. Um, really puts it across. Um, it's As it stands now, it's a wedding song, it sounds like to me. And it's a very personal wedding song. It's the kind of thing that might work at a, for a library that handles uh, videographers, people who do wedding videos and things like that. And those exist. And definitely, they exist. And you can make some money with them. I know people who are doing it. Um, and you've run listings for those things. I have. Uh, so, it, but if you want to take this out to a, a wider audience than that, it's in the AC genre, but it's tending towards the classic AC style. So I would take a look at uh, John Legend's All of Me, which I was just mentioning. Um, and it's a piano vocal. That was a hit song, and it's piano vocal. And this vocal is gorgeous, and the piano supports it beautifully. Um, so take a look at how they're getting away with that. One thing that's happening is the melody is just constantly falling over itself. It has lots of momentum. It never stops. And the lyrics are filled with vivid images. Uh, my head's underwater, but I'm feeling fine. You're crazy and I'm out of my mind. You really get a sense of who these two people are and what their relationship is like. Um, he says, uh, what would I do without your smart mouth? we get a picture of a real person on the other side of it, not, a, not the more generic love song that you have here. Today's listeners tend to pull away from generic phrases and be much more interested in that more vivid, image-based, action-based, you know, use a measuring stick to tell us what you would do for this love or compare it to something else. Use comparisons, use images, use actions. Um, here's what I did, here's what you did, here's what made me smile, here's what made you laugh. Um, and that you'll see all of that in All of Me, which was huge, number one hit for many, many weeks on AC. Um, that's a good song to take a look at. So we get a, a more of a, less of a generic love song and more of a engaging, uh, pull you in kind of love song. Interesting that you mentioned those, uh, because those actions, every one that you mentioned evokes an emotion mm -hmm. or a feeling. Yeah. Yeah, trigger, they're like trigger words. They yep. make the emotion, the listener feel something. Using trigger words is a really good thing to do. Uh, next one up is Broken Heart. Um, 
it's uh, the bluesy feel in the verse, and then it switches in the chorus. So there's a lot of contrast here. We've been talking about contrast all day long, and this was a really interesting use of contrast because when you got to that chorus, you went major then, <laughs> and I uh, and it worked. I didn't have any problem following that at all. And then back again into the verse at the end of the chorus, you really have that strong transition. It's kind of a garage rock move. I was going to say this is direct. This is right out of the '50s rock feel. You're looking at the Sonics there, and you're looking at some. And the Sonics were famously used a couple of years ago. Um, uh, have love will travel. Oh, that's right. Yeah, in a uh, big uh, um, trailer for a TV show. Um, take a look at uh, some of those uh, early 60s, um, the Kingsmen, the Sonics, and then they are the le- they are the the legacy bands from that are the the Black Keys, and um, you could take a look at them as well in the 2220s. Um, uh, Black Rebel Motorcycle Club and see if you could drive this harder and keep the raw energy in it you know at, but take a listen to those and see if you think any of those would work as kind of a template for the raw mm, driving rhythmic energy underlying this song you've got the the feel for it and the, you've got the right guitar sound um, great guitar sound I yeah yes and take a listen really go listen to have have love will travel um, the Sonics, and you're going to hear what you could do with this song uh, to make it more con- for contemporary ears, which really love that raw '50s driving rock sound. That uh, you know, Louis Louis, they just they love it. Right. I was going to say there were some tuning issues in this, but in the context of oh, garage God, yes. rock, I mean, it, it, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, I don't know if it was by intent or by mistake, but it's keep almost, that guitar with that yeah, tuning right there. Yeah, it's almost freaking. And get working. out in your garage with a good drummer and bass player. Or, or not good drummer, but somebody, who, <laughs> <laughs> but somebody who can really slam it, you know, and keep really good tight time. All right, and that's what you're gonna hear. The last one, and look at that. We're only three minutes over, and if you take out my bad jokes and occasional <laughs> story, we would have been right on time. Okay, I actually we did the math. I, I did the math before the show to work this all out, and Robin's been awesome. Delivering uh, 10 pounds of groceries in a five pound bag for every one. Well, there's someone standing right there with a whip. So. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's Bria. She's got the whip. Boy, that woman. She's constantly kicking me under the table. Um, She's not. Um, Okay, uh, we are on the last one. This one's called Front Bumper. Love the title. Guess that a young hot mess will be driving through a town like this. Who would have thought that a four way stop on a country road would lead to a kiss? You went, I went, who's right away was it? We both hit the gas, neither one of us caught it. Now we're swapping more than driver's license. Okay, um, this is an interesting song uh, because of the double entendres in it. Oh, those were double entendres? <laughs> Maybe they weren't even double entendres. Maybe they were pretty out there. Um, there's a lot. Uh, here's what's happening. I mean, Ralph Murphy says in, 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 in Murphy's Laws, he says, in country, in, you're selling to women. Women are the audience for, for country music. They're the ones who buy the stuff. They're the ones who haul their boyfriends off to the concerts. They're the ones who drive the sales of country artists and country music. And that's why you see so you see the country charts dominated by men. And it absolutely, there just aren't that many women on the country charts. And that's because they're selling these good-looking guys to, to the female audience. And the songs are very female-friendly, very romantic, very, you know, I love and with our family life and all those things. So when you get a song like this, which is a, which really goes over the line, there's a leering quality to to the lyric that is not appealing to women, and you're not you're gonna have difficulty. I'm not saying it's not well written. You did a great job of keeping this metaphor going through the whole verse and chorus, 
But because it's so uh, out front about sex, uh, and it's, there's, that, there's that kind of leer in it that I think women will be turned off by it. And that means that there are no established artists who will do it. And I've run across this before where there's been a problem with pitching this kind of song because publishers don't want to pick it up. Music publishers in Nashville don't want to pick it up. And it's a shame because you put a lot of, of energy and, and craft into writing this song. So I would take a look at a, at a huge hit like um, Body Like a Back Road the Sam Hunt hit, which handles this kind of thing very well. He it, it walks that line really, really well. And take a look at backing away from the metaphor a little bit and putting a little more of that kind of softness into it. It's a, there, it's a very sensual song, Body Like a Back Road, and it went straight to number one and it stayed there for weeks and weeks and weeks. And yet it's a very sexy song and country has traditionally stayed away from that. So I would take a look at, I think there's a place for that type of song now, but I think this cross, this goes too far and I, I think you'll have trouble pitching it and trouble selling it. One thing you can do with this, I have seen this happen once before, and that's that you can put a YouTube video up, um, a lyric video up, and um, see what kind of reaction you get from country uh, listeners. And if you get a positive reaction from it, then you can take it to a publisher and say, see, see, there's 50,000 people who love this song. Don't, you shouldn't be afraid of it. It's, we, we ought to go there now. It's where country music should be going. Um, but <laughs> or you could just make it into a hip hop song and it'd be perfectly <laughs> acceptable. You'd have to filthy it up a little for that. That's true. <laughs> and That's be, true. be more misogynistic and, and sexually overt. And it would be awesome. Um, you were amazing. Uh, you were <laughs> on you. fire. I, I was, the whole time I'm thinking, I've never seen Robin drink a cup of coffee. Did you like <laughs> no. snort some meth before you came? <laughs> because you were like whipping them out, boom, 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 all day long, and and didn't miss a beat. Good job. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Um, and once again, she is the author of this amazing book. So, like, I'd say 80% of the people in the chat room already own this book and every time I hold it up they're like I love that book I love Robin and for good reason for those of you who want to do stuff for film and TV songs for film and TV there is no other book on the market uh, this still. book is still yeah. hard to believe that nobody else has covered this topic but you know songs that are good for records aren't always good for film and TV there's a different um, and vice versa too, you know. Yeah. For radio, we mean radio right. hits are different from film and TV. Yep. We, as we saw today, there were a couple of really beautiful refrain lines that would work great for film and TV, but you wouldn't hear those songs on the radio. So Bria included links uh, in the info section below the video, so you can go click on those and get the book. Uh, people are saying the best book. Robin's oh, book is you. good. Good? You mean Robin's book is great? Uh, <laughs> anyway, thank you guys for sending in the songs. Thank you for writing some great music and being brave oh, yeah. um, and letting uh, letting us, me uh, do this to them. Yeah, yeah you know, but you. you're helpful. Uh, you don't do it with malice. You do it with love. Love. So that's oh, right. Love. Yeah. Um, I was going to say we'll be back next week, but we won't. You're out of town next week, and I am out of the office, I believe, on Monday. So we're not doing a taxi TV next week, but we will be back two weeks from today. The Olympics, did the Olympics end last mm -hmm. night? Okay, so that means our favorite show's back on Wednesday night. Oh, good, okay. Um, what's the name? I'm drawing a blank on the... Blacklist? Yeah, Blacklist, back on Wednesday night. <laughs> um, it's the high point of my week, shows you what a life I've I've been got. watching a Person of Interest marathon. So oh, I really? really? Oh, I love it. They love lost it. me. I they don't did? know why oh, they yeah. lost me around Man, season three. I just, yeah. uh, Lucifer I love, is good, too. I and love And they have Shaw. a new season coming up. And, and, oh, and, and This Is Us for songs. Oh, you can't beat it. we have to do a drawing. Good oh. thing. Ooh, I'm good. glad we chatted. We, we chat. Yeah, <laughs> I am going to pay you to spend a half an hour with one of these jokers. Oh, okay. Yes, I don't know if you saw that in the email no, or not, I didn't, but I, I didn't even talk part, to you about it. But that's good. I thought but I, I wanted fine. somebody in the audience to have a half an hour um, Skype consult with you. Sure. Um, you do those, right? I absolutely do those, Okay, yes. good thing. <laughs> <laughs> You know, what can I say? I'm writing it, I'm writing it, I'm yeah, writing it. Oh, hell with it. She's going to do it. So I <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll volunteer her for this, but thank you for paying me. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay, uh, so what we're going to do, oh, you guys are already typing plus ones. Um, when, <laughs> when I give you the go, you guys are going to type plus ones, then Bria is going to go and hit somebody in the chat room, and whoever that person is, we will announce the winner here. You will give... Bria, your email address, um, and then 
Bria will connect you and Robin for you to get your half hour consult and your pure lottery. Huh? They'll email me. Yeah, they'll yeah. email Bria at Bria. <laughs> B- oh, I love this. Taxi TV at taxi dot com. Taxi TV at taxi dot com. Not yet. I, I, I was only <laughs> demonstrating what I was going to do. I haven't They're actually. They're so done. enthusiastic. Yes. I love it. Oh, you people, slow down. I love it. They really want this. Thank you. All right, we're going to take a break. It. We're okay. taking a break. Calm, only once, yes. guys. Linda Collins says, down. "Only yes." Calm down. Everybody okay, calm everybody's down. calmed down. One, two, three, plus one. And it's not the first caller. <laughs> I mean, remember that when you used to call into radios and you typed, you did all the numbers and then you waited until they say, okay, call in. And you'd hit that last number. I once called a one. talk radio show and they picked up and I went, <laughs> I didn't have anything to say. I totally forgot what I was going to say. It looked like, well, at least nobody knew who I was, so I didn't look like that much of an idiot. Okay, Bria gets to choose. Ding, 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 ding. Yep, pick one. Ding, 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 ding. She can scroll up and down. She can go anywhere she wants. Um, John Engelman. John Engelman, you are today's lucky winner. Yay! Okay, I'll be seeing you. John Engelman, where is it? And the winner is John Engelman. All right. Okay, there he is. With Sandwich that, in. congratulations, okay. John. So, Taxi TV at taxi.com. Thank you guys for making this a fun show. Robin, yeah. thank you for doing oh, an my incredible inter- my, job. My pleasure entirely. Thank you. Uh, I can you. never get this right. It's backwards. <laughs> yeah. Over, no. No, you were right the first time. Over down there. <laughs> You know, you can make your camera do that mirror thing, and then it'd be all normal. I, I'll show you not, Nothing is normal in my world. Don't <laughs> oh, forget, share this with people you don't like. Um, can <laughs> sure, I have the like thing? Don't I, like. I need don't do life. that. <laughs> sure, everybody's Thumbs got up. somebody they like. <laughs> we will see you share guys like. in two weeks. Bye. <laughs>